Hey guys, I'm super happy to to present the, one of my favorite tools in my gig bag. Going to any venue, you need one of these. I don't care if you're a vintage amp owner or a modern amp owner. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. But I've seen a lot of interest lately in uh, voltage reducers. Like, And the only one that's out there right now, everybody thinks the only one is out that's out there, is the uh, brown box, which is very expensive. And I saw some of my buddies online, like Nick Seveny and uh, Matthew Scott were saying they needed to get one, but they were reluctant to pay the high price of the brown box. And I said, wait a second, I've been using the best voltage reducer for over 11 years, and it's half the price of the brown box. And that is the Carl Hartman Tone Preserver. You can see my home voltage right now is 123 volts, zero amps. And I'm on line, see it? And when I sometimes I mistakenly refer to these as voltage regulators, and that is not correct. It's a voltage reducer because a regulator will regulate the voltage at a certain voltage, like a, uh, the Furman does 120 volts, but then it also says plus or minus five, so you know it would be 115 or 125. And they're anywhere from six hundred to two thousand dollars, and a lot of pros use those along with the tone preserver. But uh, this is a voltage reducer, so you can see it's on my line voltage. I hit it minus six volts, and it goes down to one fifteen, which is more like uh, eight volts. You know, there's probably some decimals in there, and it'll go down to. 108 volts so i'll show you all the tricks of how to use this thing how valuable it is to take with you everywhere and it fits in your gig bag with no problems now see what happened was i i had started blowing fuses a couple of oh four or five weeks ago and uh, i called carl hartman and say hey i'm blowing fuses and he said, well, what size fuse do you have in there? And I said, well, it's a three amp. He said, well, you know, it takes a five amp. So uh, I, 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 I didn't have any five amps. So in the meantime, I, I blew a couple of more three amp fuses. But I, th this is the original one that I bought in 2009. And you see it has an analog meter. And it's showing uh, about 124 volts. And it does the same thing. It'll drop it. 116, 110, according to this meter. And so he told me that uh, the new one showing the amperage will give you an indication of your amp's health. And I thought, boy, I really need that. So I upgraded to the, the digital meter. And I'm going to go over some of the features right now that are on... Carl's website. Helps to monitor your amplifier's overall health. And I'll go over all these tricks in the, at the, the rest of the video. If, if you don't want to watch the rest, just get one and you'll be happy. But I'll show you some tricks. It's a working musician's tool. You don't have to be a rock star to afford one. And there's testimonials on his web page, which I will put a link to it in the description. Also... The story that I read in Tone Quest Journal, which is a great journal. Actually, I'm not even sure if they're still if they still exist because it's it's about a hundred dollars a year. But back in 2009, I was I was a subscriber, and I read about this in the uh, in the uh, 
journals. So I po I'll post that whole story in the description. So just press the more button below and you will see the whole Tone Quest story. But G.E. Smith was one of the first guys to buy one. You know, the, the old uh, band leader for SNL. And he had a friend who requested it, so Carl built it. And from that point on, he started that business. So these have been around this, the original voltage reducer. And it's half the price of the brown box. So don't even mess with the brown box. And it does a lot more than the brown box. I've got both of these amps hooked up to it. I could hook up three or four more amps up to it. In my room, I have everything hooked up. My two vintage, my vintage reverb, another reverb unit, my pedal board, all my super reverbs. I could probably run them all at the same time, and and you can run them all too. Watch. Well, uh, I'm going to turn on the amp here, and watch the meter. See the amps go up. It's on standby. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I've got both amps on. They're running at 0.7 amps. So what I'll show you the, it's like a heart monitor for your amp. If that amp meter starts going up, you know you're, you're developing some kind of an issue. And that's exactly why I bought this new one. Because with my fuse problem that I was having, if I would have had this ammeter, I would have been able to diagnose very quickly which amp it was. It took me a while to figure out because I had both of them plugged in at the same time. But uh, I'll explain all that as we go. So it's on standby. Uh, you can say that each amp idles in standby at about 0.3 amps. And that's something you want to get. You want to get your baseline for your amps on what they run. Now I'm going to take it off standby. And you see this, now it's jumping up to 0.9, another 0.3 amps. And then I'm going to do the 1960 over here. And now we're at uh, 1.3 amps, 1.2 amps. So you can hook up as many amps as you want to this thing until you get to five amps and you're going to blow the fuse in the box. But let's, let's look at the box real quick. Hopefully I don't get electrocuted here. It's, um, like I said, built like a tank. It's all hand wired. Lifetime guarantee. You never have to worry about it. The only circuit board that you see in there, that is for the digital meter. And it's a very simple, very effective device. Now we're going to get, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some tricks on your tube bias. When you set your power tube bias at your home voltage and you get to a venue that's six, running five or six volts higher, that's going to really affect your, your bias. So I want to teach you how to, to use it for that and also monitoring your amps health there's more value to that than anything if you ask me if i would have had this meter i would have known before i went to a gig that there was something getting ready to go out either an electrolytic capacitor or uh one of my uh my rectifier tube my gz34 it turned out it was my rectifier tube that was blowing the fuses which is almost 99 percent of the time so, but if i'd have had this meter i could have seen it I said, wait a second, it usually idles at 0.6 amps when it's fully on, and now it's at 2.5 amps, getting close to 3 where it's going to blow the fuse, and that, and that would have been a, a very great indicator to fix the amp before you go blow it at a gig. Okay, for starters, I'm just going to show you what I did when I went before on, on the way to a gig. I just unplug it. Stick it in my gig bag. And I'm off. See? Fits fits nice in there. 
And then uh, you get to your venue, you plug in, you go, oh my gosh, they're running at 125. It could be running less. I've been to some that were at 119. Either way, the good thing is, is when you get there, you can adjust the voltage to match the voltage that you biased your tubes at so that uh, you know that it's biased where, it, where you like it. All right, what I'm doing here, and this is gonna be like a real life simulation that you're going to a gig and the power supply isn't the same as what you biased your amp at. So what we got here on the left, I, I'm at minus six volts. So we're at 115 volts into the amp. We've got a bias at the max well, 115 volts gives us a plate voltage of 443 volts, DC volts. Now, 70% plate dissipation for your bias voltage at 443, 444 is about 40.8. So I've got this thing maxed out. I've got the tubes as hot as they should go at 70%. So let's say we go to a gig and uh, we don't have the box, but we biased it at a lower, a lower voltage, and we get to the gig, and it's six volts higher than what we biased it at, and we biased it on the high side, hot side. So now we're at their line voltage, which is 160. I mean, 122. The plate voltage has jumped up. Oh, shoot, almost 30, 30 volts on the plate from 444 to 471. The bias voltage is at 44.5. Let's see, these are pretty matched tubes. 44.5 on both sides. Uh, yeah, don't ask me how I got match set, but they're pretty perfect. So I'm going to go do a calculation. Usually when your plate voltage goes up, you should reduce your bias voltage. So your bias voltage voltage has jumped up by five milliamps, or this is actually in millivolts because of my bias probe, but it's jumped up five milliamps, and this has jumped up 30 volts DC. So that's your situation at the gig. Now I'm gonna go see what this is at, and you know it's gonna be over 70% because you should have re reduced this bias voltage. All right, so what's happened now, you've increased your plate voltage and your bias voltage. So you're running the tubes even hotter than they should, than you did before. So now you're way over 70%. 70% on this voltage of 471 is approximately 38.4 milliamps, and you're at 45. So you've gone to a gig, you got six more volts on the venue supply, house supply there, and you're, you could potentially red plate your uh, tubes. If nothing else, they're gonna get really hot and so is the rest of the amp. I mean, the lower voltage, and these were designed, this, these old circuits were designed at 110 and 117 volts back in the 50s and 60s. That's what the supply was. And now you're hitting it with 122, 123, maybe up to 125 in some places. So all your resistors are gonna get hotter. Um, everything, your capacitors, the whole, the whole deal, your transformers are gonna get hot. So the amp's just gonna, you know, heat is the enemy of a, an amp. So now you've just hit it with a whole bunch of heat. You could burn something up. So you've got the box, you get to the gig, you've biased it at, let's say minus six at home, and you get six more volts there, you can go to minus 12. Now you're at uh, 415 volts and you're, uh, your bias is at 38, 37. So either way, it's just a good way to check your voltages when you go to a gig. And it's a good way to adjust your bias on the fly.
just to go back over the voltages, you can get about a, uh, I calculated all this, a 57 volt difference between minus 12 and line. You can go from 415 volt plate voltage or 417 up to 473 and 473 is pushing it. I run mine at around 446. I think the schematic shows 430 or something like that. But, uh, oh, another thing I wanted to show you and a good thing to uh, set your voltage at is to get your heater wires at 6.3 volts. Let's look at that real quick. Your heater wires, that's where I'm hooked up right now. My heater wires for the pro with the probes and they should be at 6.3 volts. That's what runs all these glowing red things in all your tubes, <laughs> filaments, like a light bulb. And as you can see right now, let's look at the voltage. At 115 volts, the heater wires are running at 6.53 volts. They're supposed to be at 6.3. So that's not bad. But it's another indicator to how hot you can run these uh, filaments and wear out your tubes. Watch, I'm going to go to line and see what happens to the heater voltage. Now the heater voltage is almost 7 volts. Now this is AC voltage. And that's what your, uh, these old output transformers right there, I mean not output, but uh, power transformers, they're designed to put out 6.3 volts for all the tubes to make them run. And actually 5 volts, there's a 5 volt tap too that runs the rectifier tube. But all the other ones are 6.3. And uh, so now we're at almost 7 volts AC. 6.5's in the ballpark, and then minus 12, you got your uh, heater wires down to 6.12 volts AC. So that's a good good starting point if you want to just run your tubes at the proper heater voltage. You know, check that too. So that's pretty much the demo. It's a pretty straightforward box. Go ahead and get one. You won't be disappointed. Like I said, uh, even if you have a modern amp, you'll be able to tell when your amp's starting to act up. And the, the electrolytic B-plus big filter caps, when they start to go bad, that amperage on this meter is going to start building up. And as soon as you blow a fuse, you could probably look at this thing and say, wow, was it three amps? And like I said, this takes a five amp fuse, so you'll blow the, the fuse in your amp, which is three amp usually, before you'll blow the fuse in this thing. But uh, you can't go wrong. It's half the price of the brown box. Built like a tank. Lifetime guarantee. And be sure to read that Tone Quest Journal story. I, I pasted the whole story from 2009 in the description. The one that I originally read to make me buy the box. And it goes into how Eddie Van Halen you know, lowered his voltages on his Marshalls to 90 watts. I mean 90 volts using a Variac and... And then how everybody started blowing up their amps because they started jacking the, the voltages up, see what would happen, and yeah, it blows your amp up. So, and then uh, all the links to buy these are in there. Carl's a great guy. He'll help you any way he can. Uh, it probably takes him a few weeks to build them, but uh, he's, he's ready for your business. And like I said, you half the price of the brown box so go ahead and get your order in i'll talk to you guys later so go ahead and order one you won't be disappointed carl's a great guy i think it takes him a few weeks to build them uh sorry i haven't been around you know this virus thing i hope everybody's well I, we've been well it's just we've had two trips canceled well not two but possibly two trips canceled to europe to see our uh, family and we're supposed to go in August, and that might fall through too. But uh, 
get the box. I think it's, uh, I'll put all the links on how you can buy it. So it's $179.99, half the price of a brown box. You won't be disappointed. Got all the features you need, plus more. The brown box will tell you, oh, you can only run one amp on it. So it $350, $360 a pop. I've had heard stories where music stores have 10 or 20 of these things laying there for one, you know, one for each amp. And I'm going, are you kidding me? You could buy one of these and probably hook up six amps easily. So, uh, yeah, and be sure to read that Tone Quest journal story. That was what convinced me to buy it way back in 2009. That's a great journal. I'm not sure they're still around, but you can Google Tone Quest. But it talks about Eddie Van Halen, how he originally got his brown sound by lowering the voltage on his uh, Marshall by uh, down to 90 volts. And then people started getting their variax and jacking around with the voltages and started blowing their amps up because they tried to see what it would be like if they cranked it up to 130 or some crazy stuff. And you shouldn't run it really down in the 90 range either. Like I showed you, those uh, heater wires are meant to run at 6.3 volts for the tubes to, to work correctly. And, uh, but Carl's a great guy. He'll help you out any way he can. A lifetime guarantee. You can gig with it, throw it around. Uh, I, I wouldn't throw it around. You know, you've got that meter. You could crack it or something, but uh, take it to all your gigs, check your voltages, and be confident that you got the voltage and you know what your bias is. And also, it'll tell you the amp's health before you don't go to the gig. If your uh, amp meter is getting up to the two or three amp range, which will blow a fuse at three, then you know you've got to fix something before you go gigging or you're, it's going to blow at the gig probably. And it's generally a, a, a B plus large electrolytic cap that might be uh, getting ready to ground out or is leaking voltage or it's the rectifier tube. They go bad a lot. Every time I've had fuse problems, it's been the rectifier tube. So I have several tubes. I hate to blow up those mullards but I've blown up three now. I mean, that, but that's over an 11 year period. But sorry, I haven't been around. Uh, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen from this point on. I've been jamming every day. I just don't record anything. But I'll talk to you guys later.